What's up, YouTube? I'm back. I know it's been like a week since I uploaded, but today we're here to talk yet again. This is going to be edition six of Tyron Talks About Random Shit. This is going to be volume three of Tyron Rambles About Spider-Man. And this will be Tyron Talks Movies number two. Now listen, guys. To all you that actually subscribe and like watch my videos, thank you. That means a lot. Like seriously, watching me ramble is entertaining to you guys. And you know what? I'm cool with it. I'm cool with it. To all like 40 of you. This is just like my SoundCloud. Anyways, let's get into it. So a lot of YouTubers like to break up what, like I'm going to talk about a lot today. And all the stuff I talk about today could be broken up into three different videos. And honestly, it'd be like, you know, probably a good idea to do that. But right now I'm going to say screw that because, you know, I don't really want to do that. And what I want to talk about today is I want to compare all the Spider-Man movies and rank them. Mainly just rank them, you know. I don't really want to talk about, like, how they all relate to each other and shit. Because that's just a whole other video. And then I'm going to talk about the live-action adaptations of Spider-Man, the actors who play them. And I'm going to rank them and I'm going to talk about which one is truly the best. And, you know, other factors that go into their performances. And then I'm going to talk about my favorite love interest out of all these movies. And I was going to rank the franchises as they were, but then I thought I should probably wait till Far From Home comes out to do that, because then I can better rank the franchise, because, you know, Amazing Spider-Man only has two films, and we don't know how well Far From Home's really going to perform or how it's going to resonate with audiences yet, so I don't want to rank the franchises till that happens, at least. So, let's get into it. Now, out of all the seven Spider-Man movies, I'm going to give pretty good reasoning for why I ranked them each at their place, and I'm going to talk about things I liked and things I didn't like, okay? Spy Amazing Spider-Man 2. Oh, God. Oh, God. I wanted to like this film so bad, because I kind of, I genuinely liked Andrew Garfield in the role. I actually thought he was, he fit pretty well. He didn't have the look of Peter Parker or kind of the character, but I just kind of like this reimagining. I figured that's what they were probably going for. They weren't trying to do the standard conventional Peter Parker. And if that was intentional, <clears throat> that's great. But if it wasn't, you guys really fucked up. I'm sorry. But um, I like Andrew Garfield's portrayal, but this movie just tries to stuff too much shit in too little time. Tries to start Sinister Six movies, introduce a bunch of these new villains and stuff. It it just doesn't work. And honestly, the only good part of this movie are the swinging scenes, because the swinging scenes in this Amazing Spider-Man movies are really good. And Andrew Garfield's performance, other than that, it's just kind of shitty. The writing is terrible. The plot is just so dumb. It, it honestly just is a not a good movie. Okay, moving on, number six. It breaks my heart to put it here, but Spider-Man 3. God, this is actually a good trilogy. It has a beginning, middle, and end. It just sucks that the ending wasn't as good as the beginning or middle. It's like, if you're running the 100 meter, don't sprint the first fucking, like, 67 meters at 100%, and then just kind of two-thirds it the rest of the fucking race, because then you're going to get beat by the other people hauling ass through like the fucking Dark Knight trilogy. Anyways, but, you know, Spider-Man 3, same shit as Spider-Man, Amazing Spider-Man 2, putting too much shit in too little time. And also, Harry having amnesia is the laziest fucking plot device you can use. Like, seriously, guys, did you just get lazy with this shit? God damn it, Avi Arad, stop fucking with Sam Raimi and let him do what he can do, all right? Because he's good at it. Oh, by the way, guys, I fucking hate Avi Arad. Anyways... On to number five. This one was hard to put here. Amazing Spider-Man. Now, don't get me wrong. I like the Amazing Spider-Man. I like it. You know, even though the plan at the end of turning everybody into giant lizards is really fucking stupid. I like this movie. Andrew Garfield does a good job as Spider-Man. You know, it's a good movie. The swinging scenes, like I said, I like because they actually involve real physics and it makes some fucking sense on screen. But this movie, it's hard to really review it because it's just kind of, eh. Like, I like it, yeah. <clears throat> you know? It's just, eh. So I, I really have nothing more to say about it. Anyways, uh, on to the next movie. And that is Spider-Man Homecoming. Now, I know a lot of you are thinking, Homecoming's pretty good. Why is it so low? Huh? Anyways, um, let me explain myself. So, Homecoming really good movie but it's not like a great spider-man movie now i'm also going to talk about this whole debate a little bit real real quick here so what i think 
people are wrong about when they say this isn't a great Spider-Man movie is I think it is a good Spider-Man movie, but for Spider-Man within the context of the MCU. See, in all these other Spider-Man movies, there are no other heroes in this, like, in this universe. You know what I mean? So it's easy for him to be the ultimate hero and be, and, like, be the way he is in the comics, you know, sometimes, when he's, like, working alone. But in the fucking MCU, he's not working alone because there's all these other known heroes in the universe. So I think he fits well within the context of the MCU. Also, I like Michael Keaton in this movie. He does a great job as the Vulture. He is a good villain. He is fucking terrifying in that car, in that car ride scene. That is so fucking scary. God, imagine being in that situation. You'd piss your pants so quick. Anyways, next. Now, next up, number three, I got the original Spider-Man, Sam Raimi. This movie's really fucking campy. Um, CGI is really shitty, but it's it, it's 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 one hell of a ride. It is so much fun watching this movie. Like that's the thing about the Sam Raimi films, they are so much fun to watch. Like I can rewatch them so many times because they are just fucking hilarious most of the time. Spider-Man three is a comedy. Like don't even tell me any different. Don't, because it'll ruin my perception of that movie. Yeah, but Spider-Man, the original one, great performance by Tobey Maguire, even though I didn't kind of like him as Spider-Man. I like James Franco in this movie. Kirsten Dunst. Fuck Kirsten Dunst. Just kidding. Fuck Mary Jane. Yeah, I hate Mary Jane in these movies, but she's okay in Spider-Man 1. Oh, yeah, in Spider-Man 3, Mary Jane's just a complete C-word. Um, yeah, she's that in the third one. First one... She's good. She's, she's not terrible in the first one, so that's good. Number two! Spider-Man 2. Yeah, I know what a lot of you are thinking. Well, actually, okay, let's just say this. Everything's now down to six. My number one is between these two movies. Number one, option one, or number one, part A. Spider-Man 2. I love Spider-Man 2. Spider-Man 2, fuck. It's so good. Such a great movie. Sam Raimi really fucking knocked it out of the park on this one. In this movie, Mary Jane is just a psychotic bitch. Not like she's cutting people up, but she just keeps fucking with Spider-Man. What are you doing? Like, first she's like, hey, kiss me on the lips, man. Kiss me on the lips, you fucking idiot. Kips, kiss me. And Peter's just like, oh, boy, yeah. Like, the fuck you doing? Ginger? Fuck. Oh, Peter also fights Doc Ock on a fucking train. It's insane. It's super fun to watch, honestly. Super entertaining. Um, I love that part of the movie. Uh, Alfred Molina. Great performance as Dr. Octopus. Uh, James Franco's performance, not as good as in the first one, but, you know, I still like it, you know? Kind of reminds me of Franco before Pineapple Express when he became a fucking clown. Um, now... Wait, wait, wait. I, I, what did I also want to say about Spider-Man 2? Also, Mary Jane just gets married to some... Is about to get married to some random fucking guy. Then she makes him kiss her like she kissed Spider-Man, and it's really fucking creepy. Go rewatch that scene, and you'll realize how fucking creepy that scene is, okay? I'm too far back. Um, Now we're going to go into my number one, part B. You already know what it is. I've talked about it. Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse. No further explanation. I'm not going to say anything. You guys already know why I love that movie. Okay, now we're going to get into ranking the live-action Spider-Man. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. One dude may call me a bitch in the comment section for my opinion. You know what? I don't even care. Let's talk about this. So, let's start right off with the first. Tobey Maguire. Now, Tobey Maguire, no New York accent. He actually plays a really great Peter Parker. He does that really well. His whole look is like literally Peter Parker pulled out of the comics. It is, they nailed it. They were really good with how he did Peter Parker. But I want to talk also about his Spider-Man. Now, as Spider-Man, he's not like the Spider-Man in the comics. You know, he's not making quips. He's not making jokes. He's not, you know, kind of, you know, goofing off a little bit, but still like actively, like caring, actively, I don't know, assessing the situation. I don't know. But Tobey Maguire doesn't do that. He He's still kind of meager and kind of weak as Spider-Man. Not saying he's not strong and he's not powerful. What I'm saying is, like, he doesn't come off as strong and powerful. 
Like, he makes these weird grunt noises. And, like, whenever he makes a joke or, like, line, it is really fucking cringy. And it is just, like... Oh, I know you're trying, Toby, but you just fucking suck at this, man. I think it's just his fucking voice. Honestly, it's the voice. God damn it. It's it's the voice. It's, it's too whiny. <laughs> but I do like... I do like Tobey Maguire's portrayal of Spider-Man. I think it is a very solid portrayal of both Peter Parker and Spider-Man. I think he nails Peter Parker. Kind of doesn't have, you know, the Spider-Man, though. Now, let's talk about Andrew Garfield. Andrew Garfield's actually, like, the opposite. Andrew Garfield doesn't so much have the Peter Parker. You know, Peter Parker's supposed to be kind of nerdy, kind of unpopular. Why would you use Andrew Garfield as the mark for that? Like... Look at fucking Andrew Garfield. Man is a model, okay? Like, seriously. What the fuck you doing? Trying to convince me this dude gets fucking picked on? Jesus Christ. And he's like an edgy skater boy, too. Probably fucking shops at Hot Topic. You're trying to tell me this motherfucker gets bullied? Well, if he shops at Hot Topic. Oh, shit. Maybe. Oh, shit. Maybe. Never mind. Um, no, I'm fucking, I'm fucking with you. I'm fucking with you. I, I, I still don't believe he gets Peter Parker right. His, the... He, he's, yeah, God, he's just too, like, fucking, ugh, he's just too fucking, like, hot to be Peter Parker, I don't know, I, am I being gay, no, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm cool, anyways, uh, uh, okay, we're gonna talk about his Spider-Man, his Spider-Man is actually pretty good, you know, he makes more of the jokes, more of the quips, you know, the classic Spider-Man shit you like seeing, like, someone throws some shit at him, he finds a way to make a pun out of it or a joke. It's pretty fun, you know. He's got a lot of personality and charisma in Spider-Man, which I like to see. But he's also determined as Spider-Man, which I like to see. But, like, again, what I said, the Peter Parker shit, it just doesn't work for me. You know, and the scenes between him and Emma Stone, where he's Peter Parker, you know. I just feel like Peter Parker wouldn't be, like, that naturally. He wouldn't just flow like that, like, just off the top. Not, I'm not saying, like, Andrew Garfield's out here spitting sick freestyles to Emma Stone. No, what I'm saying is that, um, hmm, 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 trying to think, trying to think. What I'm saying is that their flirting scenes, that's not how I would think Peter Parker would be, like, flirting. I think he'd just be super awkward as hell, you know? Maybe that's just me. Maybe that's just me, okay? It, it probably is. It probably is. But Andrew Garfield, good Spider-Man, eh, Peter Parker. Now, Tom Holland, a lot of people have noted that he is the balance between these two. And while I would agree with that, it's not like that balance alone makes him better. I think he's balanced, but I think he's kind of relatively on the same level as both these guys. I like him as Peter Parker. He does look exactly like Peter Parker and how I would expect him to in this age. And, you know, he, he's not so much bullied in this modern age because, you know, with him being as smart as he is, if you put that nowadays, a lot of smart people are actually, you know, popular and shit. Or not popular, but they're not, like, disrespected or they're not called nerds anymore. You know what I mean? And so he's kind of in that situation. Plus, he goes to an actual, like, science high school, you know, like a science-based, academics-based high school. So, you know, people probably have respect to him for being smart. And his bully is, like, this cocky Indian kid, which is fucking hilarious. I find that so funny. Um, and he nails the Peter Parker, honestly. He's really nice to everybody. He's always super caring, and he's always, like, super courteous. And as Spider-Man, I like him too. You know, you see the jokes that I was talking about with Tobey Maguire missing, which was a big reason why I didn't like it. You know, jokes have to be there for me to like the Spider-Man. And Tom Holland had plenty of jokes. He also had serious moments. I like the moment when he's trapped under the rubble and he's like, if you're nothing without the suit, then you shouldn't have it. And he like lifts the fucking rubble off of him. It's that move. That scene, that scene's really good. Okay. So Tom Holland, the perfect balance. Now I want to rank these. I want to rank these. Okay. Number three, while not bad, he's just not up to snuff with the other guys. And that is Andrew Garfield. Loved his Spider-Man. Didn't really feel his Peter Parker. I wasn't feeling it, you know? Just one of those days, I guess. And then we're going to talk about fucking... Uh, oh, shit. Number two, Tobey Maguire. Now, I love Tobey Maguire as Spider-Man and Peter Parker, but as Spider-Man just doesn't really sell it for me it just doesn't it just doesn't really it doesn't okay but his peter parker is amazing i love his peter parker 
And I honestly love the trilogies of films he's in. Sam Raimi does a great job. All the villains usually do a great job. I even like Topher Grace for all you assholes who keep saying Topher Grace ruined that movie. Fuck you. Um, and then at number one, it's Tom Holland. It's Tom Holland. Great balance between the characters. And, you know, when I kind of look at it more, he is relatively better than both those characters in both those areas. So Tom Holland is my favorite live-action Spider-Man so far. But not my favorite live-action Spider-Man movie, just so far. And if he fucks up, then we're, then we're moving Toby up. If he fucks up again, Andrew, big belly, big boy, you're coming up. I'm getting really weird with this, aren't I? Okay, um, let's move into the next part. The love interest, the love interest. I'm not really going to talk about Liz from Homecoming, because what really was the point of Liz? You know, she, she did nothing. She was merely there for a plot twist and shit, so, you know... You, you, she she wasn't really important. So we're going to talk about Gwen Stacy and Mary Jane. Now, let's talk about Gwen Stacy first. First off, Emma Stone and Andrew Garfield have amazing chemistry. They have good chemistry. Their, their kind of flirting sessions were funny. They felt kind of out of place in the film a little. You know, kind of slowed the pacing a little bit at times. But, you know, I still enjoyed them. And Emma Stone gives a... a a good performance in the amazing spider-man and then just kind of a fine performance in amazing spider-man too her death scene though is one of the best scenes in the series uh i know that sounds weird like i'm saying ha she dead that's fucking hilarious no the way she dies is kind of funny though and um no the reason i like this scene is because of the emotion that andrew garfield shows with this performance it's actually really good I'm a big fan of this scene, and, you know, it really, um, really, it really t hits you, man. It really hits you hard, you know? This dude's crying, fucking drooling all over the place. It's so sad. And then there's fucking Mary Jane. Oh, my God. You would not believe the amount of hatred I have for this character. Mary Jane is just such a bitch. She is such a bitch in these movies, and Peter is so fucking nice. And she's just, ugh, ugh. Literally, in the first movie, she's just like, oh, Peter, I want to be with you. But Peter's like, hey, listen, I can't be with you. I got Spider-Man shit to do. And she's like, okay, respect. Second movie, she makes him a cake. She's like, fucking kiss me, dude. Kiss me on the fucking lips. Like, not like that. But then Peter's just like, oh, boy, yeah. And then at this random fucking party, you know, that he's invited to to take pictures of, like, his boss's son. Yeah, boss's son. Yeah, Mary Jane's dating the boss's son. She gets all fucking mad at Peter and yells at him because he wasn't able to go to her show because he was literally stopping in fucking GTA. I mean, come the fuck on, Mary Jane. And then, um, yeah, she gets mad at him. And then she fucking gets engaged to this dude who's also a fucking astronaut, which is just, you know, what the fuck? And then, in this one really weird fucking scene, she makes the dude kiss her like she kissed Spider-Man, like, ah. And it's just like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Oh, and then, um, fucking Doc Ock kidnaps, kidnaps Mary Jane. Spider-Man comes in, try, comes to save her. And when she, you know, she finds out it's Peter, she's like, oh my god. Oh my god, you're Spider-Man? It's like, bitch, you couldn't have figured that out earlier? Their voices sound exactly the fucking same. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Um, yeah, but then she figures out, she falls in love with him, leaves her husband, or her fiancé, on the fucking wedding day to Peter. You know, then she's like, you know, I love you no matter what, you know. I don't care if you're Spider-Man, I need to be with you. You know, she's like, go get him, tiger. Peter comes out the window, she looks all sad. Next thing you know, Spider-Man 3 comes along. Mary Jane's a total bitch in this one. At first, she fucking sucks in her play, and then she's all mad at Peter. She's like, the reviews are bad, and like Peter's like, yo, Spider-Man gets trashed in the news. Like, literally, the dude I work for trashes Spider-Man every fucking day. And then Mary Jane's just like, it's not about you, it's about me. Like, what the fuck? Who the fuck says that? That is so fucking selfish and just honestly fucking terrible. Like, I hate that line so fucking much and then you know it's all mad at peter for being spider-man because you know he's a pretty good fucking superhero 
She's like, nye, 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 nye. and then she starts hanging out with Harry, almost fucks him. Then she leaves all awkwardly. You know, like, no, if you're gonna do the deed, just do it here. And then, um, yeah, she gets kidnapped again. You know, same as three movies. And, you know, she's gonna die, but Peter comes and saves her. And then she has this weird fucking slow dance at the end. And then we finally get to say goodbye to the most hated character in the series. Just kidding. I hate her, but she kind of sucks. Anyways, shit, we got through all three topics today. I am proud of myself, guys, and I'm proud of us because you were man because you either managed to make it two minutes in this video or somehow you're at the 20 minute mark. So guess what? Uh, uh, you you get an imaginary golden cookie from your boy Tyron. There you go. In all seriousness, guys, uh, I'm gonna be back tonight actually talking about Shazam in my Shazam review because I actually really like that movie, but um. Yeah, drop a like, subscribe or some other shit, and I'll see you guys later.